my paranormal experiences began at a very young age and they've seemed to have followed me throughout my adult life but there are a few that stick out you know those moments and those things that you just can't forget and every once in a while you look back and you ponder them and you try to make sense of them but oftentimes you just have to accept them for what they are because well they're paranormal and oftentimes perfect sense is elusive but the one i want to speak about first happened to me between i guess my fifth grade year and my seventh grade year my family and i we had just moved into a half a double house on a very quiet street. And we purposely moved there because it was very close to the elementary school I was attending at the time. And I was very active with after school activities and things of that nature. My mother and father assisted too with the basketball program and other after school things. I remember one night, it was, I would say, about 9 p.m., you know, I had convinced my parents to let me stay up a little bit later, but uh, they finally got me off to bed. And I walked up to my room, and now you have to understand, the flight of stairs led to a dead end, basically. And at that dead end, you had to make a right-hand turn and then another quick turn down a long hallway. Now, my bedroom was the first door on the left. And my parents' bedroom was about 30 more feet down the hallway, straight ahead, which was the large master bedroom. So I went into my bedroom and I crawled into bed. And a few moments later, I figure I was asleep. I was awakened by a tapping sound in the hallway. And when I looked to my bedroom door, which was an interesting um, thing in and of itself because I didn't have an actual door on my bedroom. I had one of those sliding doors. They were like a, a vinyl door, kind of like a, an accordion kind of thing where you would slide it back and forth and it would lock with a magnet on the opposite side. But I always left that open. And the, the tapping noise woke me up and I, I, I looked into my doorway and there was my mother standing there. And I thought, well, that was peculiar. And I remember saying, what is it? You know, what do you want? And she did not reply verbally. But she beckoned me to come follow her with her finger. It was like that come here movement. So I figured, okay. And I, uh, I stood up, got out of bed. She turned around quickly. And I followed her. She was walking down the hallway towards her bedroom. And still, not a word was said between the two of us. And I'm following her down the bedroom, and, and it's dark. And you could really see, as you're looking forward, as I see my parents' bedroom, you can see, like, the moonlight coming through their windows. So the hall was semi-illuminated. And my mother was in front of me, leading me down the hallway. And as we get to the door of her bedroom, she dematerializes, gone. And I'm left standing in the doorway by myself, looking in my parents' bedroom and noticing my mother and father laying in their bed peacefully asleep. I was astonished, and I stood there for a few minutes just trying to get my bearings and process what what was happening now i tried to rationalize it as best as a young child could uh you know i was woken from my sleep maybe i was dreaming maybe 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 but there was no maybe i was wide awake standing in the doorway of my parent bedroom staring into the bed where they were both peacefully asleep which my mother just led me down the hallway.
Well, I thought to myself, did I just see a ghost? But then I rationalized that, well, in order to see a ghost of a person, doesn't that person have to be deceased? So this couldn't have been a ghost. I looked around and I was very, very unsettled. I had a very um, uneasy feeling. Part of me wanted to wake my parents up. And another part of me just wanted to run back to my bedroom and hide under the covers. So I took the middle ground and I turned around and walked back to my bedroom and hid under the covers. After a while, I suppose I fell back to sleep because my mother was then waking me up because I did have school the next day. And as she was waking me up, I kind of looked around and I stared at her for a few minutes trying to make sure that my mother was actually my mother and I was awake and things were somewhat normal. And they were. I remember going down the stairs for breakfast and sitting at the breakfast table. And the only words I was able to muster was to my mother. And I had asked her if she was all right. And she asked me what I meant about that. And I said, well, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. And I said, I kind of heard a noise last night. I wonder maybe if you heard anything. She just said, no, your father and I slept through the evening. Well, I went to school that day and I went to a Catholic school at the time and Catholic uh, teaching was not so keen on ghosts and spirits and the paranormal. So, you know, I really didn't say anything to anyone. And this was one of those instances that I pondered over the years. And it was the ghost thing that, that bothered me because I kept going over and over in my mind that in order to see a ghost, the person has to be deceased. But my mother... Well, she's alive, and she's still alive till this day. So years went on, and I pushed it to the back of my mind. And with the popularity of paranormal TV shows, I always had an interest in cryptids, the paranormal, UFOs. All of those things fascinated me. So one evening I was watching a paranormal television show. And there was a reference made to a doppelganger. And I'm like, that's interesting. So I watched the episode. And sure enough, a doppelganger, as was described on the show, was a living person's double or possible spiritual double. And it did come from a living person. Well, two plus two usually equals four. And in that instance, I put the two and two together and I finally figured out that that night, as a child, I saw my mother's doppelganger. The show went on to say that usually a doppelganger is a harbinger of doom or misfortune or ill will or, or something not so good is about to happen. And I can be honest here and say that through the years, my parents' relationship deteriorated into divorce and, you know, our financial situation wasn't always perfect and we did face hardship from time to time. It's a curious thing, uh, trying to reconcile that type of thing it has always been a uh, a project for me because I never shared this with my mother you know I've shared it with my wife and a few other people but you know I never told my mother about it because I didn't think she would quite understand and with everything that she's been through family wise and all since that happened I just kind of kept it to myself but it certainly made me more interested in paranormal things. And it made me look into things more deeply to try to get a better understanding of, of what these things actually are. But I will tell you this. The image 
of my mother, her doppelganger was as real as real can be. And it wasn't a translucent or see-through image. It, it was a solid human replica of my mother. However, it did not speak, led me down the hallway. There was no transparencies. There was no light shining through the image or anything. It was as real as real can be until we got to that doorway and it dematerialized like, like vapor or I'd like to say the wind just took it away. It was very peculiar. And that's something that I will never forget for sure. And, uh, my paranormal experience has been almost a blessing in a sense, because when you think of these things, a lot of people get scared. A lot of people become fearful or frightened, but at the same time, for me, it, it kind of let me know that there's so much more out there that we need to explore and we need to strive to understand. And that even in this circumstance, even though it wasn't a ghost, life after death is certainly, certainly something on the table. And uh, it's given me hope for discovery. And it has definitely led me to research more of the paranormal. My paranormal experiences didn't stop there. Although this one isn't so much paranormal as it is unidentified. I remember another paranormal type of experience happened in my senior year of high school. I was a member of the school band, and in the summertime, we had what we call band camp, and I was carpooling with a bunch of friends, and the camp started around 8 a.m., so I ate breakfast, and I made my way outside, and it was about, I would say, 7.30, 7.40 in the morning, and I was sitting on the, the wall to my house. Uh, we lived in a, a single home at the time, and we had a, a large coping on the outside. And I was, I was sitting there waiting for my friends to show up to, for the ride, but the atmosphere was very still. And there was a lot of static electricity in the air. Now, usually I lived on a semi-busy street and there was cars going up and down all the time and a lot of activity. But at this time in the morning, for some reason, it was quiet. And again, the static electricity part of it was kind of odd too. Um, you can just feel it in the air. So for reasons unknown to me, I decided to look up into the sky. And there in the sky, hovering, was what appeared to be a silver ball. And I could best describe it as if you've ever held a large silver ball bearing. It looked like a large silver ball bearing just hovering in the sky. And I, I was transfixed on this. It was pretty amazing sight to see and i i really couldn't make heads or tails of it because it certainly wasn't an airplane it wasn't a helicopter it was definitely something i've never seen before so the term unidentified flying object really fit the bill here and as i was watching it it began to move in rapid linear motions and what i mean by that is it would shoot off for maybe 50 feet and stop shoot off for maybe another 20 feet and stop. And the final time that it moved, it shot off and disappeared. At that moment of the disappearance, things on my street suddenly became normal again. I noticed cars moving up and down the street. The feeling of the static electricity was gone. And it seemed I hesitate to say it seemed time started again about that time my friends pulled up and 
I got in the car and we made our way to band camp. I didn't mention this to any of them because it left me in a, a state of deep thought. Now, I can't tell you for sure that this was an alien spacecraft, but I can tell you for sure that it was certainly unidentified. And it moved in a way that I've never seen any of our known airplanes, helicopters move. Uh, it was fast and it was very on point. And then it just vanished. And like I said, at the time of the vanishing, things on my street became normal again. Cars moving, the static electricity feeling in the air was gone. But to my knowledge, there was no missing time or anything because my friends certainly didn't make it within 10 minutes to the hour. And I didn't uh, perceive any missing time. But it was certainly a experience where I feel <laughs> it may not have been a craft we're familiar with. My next paranormal experience happened quite recently, actually. I was working an odd job. I was working the mid-shift, 3 to 11. And I had gotten done with my shift and made my way to my car. And everything seemed routine and normal. Got in my car, drove off the, the lot, and proceeded home. About 10 minutes later, I was heading down a back street where it's usually very quiet at that time of night. And I would say it's about 1120 in the evening. And as I'm driving down the street, I look out my passenger side window. And on the corner is a young child. Now, you might not think that's incredibly odd, but at 11.20 at night, and you see a young child standing on a street corner who can not be probably any older than 9 or 10, completely alone. Now, that's odd in and of itself. But the way this child was standing... The child was standing as if he was in the military, perfect attention. And his eyes were fixated at the street corner across from him. I stopped my car and just sat there for a moment looking. And I tried to see what this child was seeing on the opposite corner, but there was literally Nothing there but a parking lot. I looked back over at the child, and the child was standing there rigid as can be. Now, I couldn't determine the child's gender, but what I did notice was that the clothes the child was wearing appeared to be pristine. They were amazingly clean, and the child had very long hair expressionless and just standing at that that attention pose now i started to think about stories that i've heard about you know, black-eyed children and other entities masquerading as children and that led me to kind of push my foot to the gas pedal and just move on through I remember as I pulled away, I I looked back and the child was still standing there, same position, same at attention, straight ahead, stare, and I I just got chills. Never really figuring that one out. I proceeded home and uh I just went on with my night, wondering what I had just experienced. 
you know, my paranormal experiences have been, again, just opening the doors for possibilities. But yet, you think to yourself, there has to be an easier way to get answers to questions than being so unnerved. Oh, that's a little short paranormal experience. My paranormal experience happened on the USS John C. Stennis in 2001 in San Diego, California. So I was 21 at the time. This was uh, before 9-11. It happened in August. And I was stationed uh, in San Diego on the John C. Stennis. It's a, a aircraft carrier. And what had happened was um, when you're new in the military, I was in the Navy, you get stuck with watches. And I know that a lot of people in the military know what I'm talking about. A lot of newbies uh, have to go on watch. And you're about a four hours a piece, you know, in the morning watch and from 12 to 4 a.m. And, and so on and so forth. And because I was new and um, I was actually... When I got stationed on the carrier, I got put in V1 division, which is on the flight deck. And lucky me, I didn't to get to choose on what watch I was going to be. And that's when you, you know, hang out where you're supposed to hang out, make sure no one's supposed to be anywhere where they're not supposed to be anywhere. And you're posting a watch. So, of course, I got stuck with 12 to 4 a.m. We call it balls to four. That's just what it's called in the military. And so um, I was like, okay, well, I, I checked that out on the list. And I'm like, well, I'll, I'll try to get some sleep at a time. And uh, so be it. So on an aircraft carrier, it's about three football fields long. And like if you watch the movie Top Gun, you'll see like an island or a little like a building in the middle of the carrier. That's called an island. And I was kind of sitting in a chair right outside the island because when I got uh, stationed on the Stennis, they were putting new non-skid on the deck and repairing a lot of things because our ship was due to deploy. I would say within the next probably five months, but because of 9-11, unfortunately, we got deployed sooner. So I got, mm, oh gosh, I got up about... 10, went and ate, got my cup of coffee, and then I reported to the flight deck and on that island. And my chief, he's the person in charge, told me, you know, make sure no one is supposed to be on the flight deck because non-skid is a really nasty stuff to step on if it's not dry. So I just kind of sat there and made sure, you know, if anybody was coming up uh, to say, hey, you, you can't come out here. And make sure if I seen anybody coming off the sides of the ship, because there's ladders on the very ends of the edge of the ship where people can come on and off uh, to make sure to say, hey, you know, you can't can't go on the non-skid. And so I would say probably the first hour was uneventful and drinking my coffee. And um, that was about it. There was cell phones, but not like cell phones we have nowadays they were just like analog um so i couldn't play on my phone it was just kind of just hanging out and uh it was night of course so i would say about 1 30 ish i started to hear some things towards the front of the ship so i stood up and i was kind of looking around and on the stern i would say no, not the stern. Um, well, we call it fly one, fly two, and fly three. So fly one is the front end of the ship. Fly two is the midship. And fly three is the kind of the tail end of the ship. So to help people kind of understand where I'm looking at. So I'm looking towards the front of the ship. And we're, we're docked. So you can see other ships in the harbor too. And I thought I heard some things. So I kind of stood up and I looked around. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it was just me hearing things. And when I was looking out, there were 
Um, there's about, I would say you, everybody knows what a pallet is. So there was about, I don't know, 20 or 30 pallets kind of out in the middle of the front of the ship on fly one. And I'm five foot tall and these were taller than me. And so I was thinking maybe people were trying to walk across the, the deck because it's a lot quicker if you were to walk across the flight deck and then go to your, your birthing where you go to bed then to go underneath the ship and go through all those P ways. So I was just, like I said, I thought I heard something and I kind of just sat back down. I moved my chair towards that direction because I figured, well, maybe people are going to try to run across real quick. And I, I told them they can't. So, uh, I, like I said, I was taking a drink of coffee and this was probably about one thirty in the morning. It was so weird. So I heard like, um, someone coming upstairs, these uh, stairs were on the side. I, I would say it was about maybe 50 feet away from me. Um, heard someone coming up and I was, uh, getting done drinking my coffee, I put it down. Uh, next to me on the chair because I was going to stand up and say, hey, you know, you can't be out here. And I seen a man. And when I see it, I, I seen a man. Um, he was at least six feet tall, like I said, because I'm five foot and those pallets were about five feet off the ground. He was running, but what really creeped me out. I'm like, wait, this isn't right. He was in black and white. And I'm like, wait a minute here. And he was looking like off to, he was looking, I guess you would say, if you were running and someone was chasing you and he was looking back, like someone was chasing him. And he had a very, uh, an old, old school hat and these clothes, like you would figure maybe we're in the, maybe the twenties. And he, it was so crazy because he was running and he, um, I seen him from his head down to his feet. And then when he was running behind the, um, okay, I need to take a break here. I'm getting, this, this is creepy. I'm sorry. Okay. So the pallets, he ran behind the pallets and I could still see the top of his head. He looked towards me. Then he looked back to where I was looking back to see who was following him or chasing him. But I'm like, this isn't real because he's in black and white. It, it, like you like you'd see on TV. And I was like, no way. And my stomach just sank. Like, I'm not seeing this. Um, and he came when he was running. It was it was a slow jog, I guess you could say. So he came out on the other side of the pallets. But this time I could only see from like his waist up. And his legs were were gone. I don't gosh. The, I, the best way that I can think of is the movie. Avengers where when that guy snapped his fingers and like they started to kind of fall to pieces when he was running he kept like I said look towards me then he kept looking over his shoulder his it would be his left shoulder and his legs were kind of like a uh, withering away I guess while he was running to the other side of the flight deck and what was really creepy was it sounded like if you were to, oh gosh, um, when you're, when you take a, 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 like a bunch of newspaper and you put it in the wind and it kind of has that, that, uh, I don't know how to say it, like tissue paper in the wind, it kind of flaps, there's that sound. That's what it sounded like. And I looked down at my feet, like, am I losing it? And I look back up, he's still there. And I turned to look where he was looking at again, because like I said, this guy was scared of something. I look back and he was gone. And I'm like, no way. Nope, 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 nope. So I sat down 
I was like, okay. So I mustered up some courage and I walked over there and, um, I walked around the pallets. I didn't see anything. And I went down to where he first came up on deck, these stairs and the door was locked down there because like I said, they didn't want people coming up. It just didn't make any sense to me. And so I went back, I sat down and just that feeling of no one's going to believe me. Like I was supposed to report if I seen anything unusual, if anybody was on deck, I needed to report it. I'm like, what the heck am I going to say? This is, this is crazy. So, um, I sat back down and, and the weirdest thing was from that time, like I said, it was about one thirty because I remember checking my watch one thirty in the morning. By the time this was done, it was like 15 minutes. And I know it doesn't take 15 minutes from a person to run from one side of the ship to the other. So I'm like, what is going on? And it freaked me out. And I moved my chair inside that tower. Like I, told you I talked about before what it looked like and I kind of just sat in the doorway and I didn't want to hang out there to be honest it was so um it, it scared me and I had I had uh no idea what that was but I know that what I saw this guy was like I said in black and white it uh, in the, the, the time period close of maybe the, the 20s, and he was running from something. But when he looked at me, it, it just was like, holy cow, this is, this is not cool. So yeah, and it stuck with me ever since. I couldn't figure out um, who it could have been at that time. You know, I didn't have the internet to go and look up what was going on or uh, maybe the time period or maybe there was any history with the ship but what i saw i, I can 100 percent say that that was a ghost i i 100 believe it another experience i had and this was on the same ship we would go out on like 40 we call it 45 day cruise which means we would go out to sea for about 45 days and run drills and do ammo on load and refueling for aircraft, you know, just things like that. And I worked on the night shift purposely because I didn't want to be around a ton of people because there's a lot of people on a carrier. So one of uh, the things that I did was I was also training to be a master at arms and that's like a military police. So, uh, what I would do is I would work with the mastered arms on that ship and they would let me do some watches with them. And so at night time, I would like to take, like I said, take the tower up and make sure the doors are locked and nothing is supposed to be out of the ordinary happening. So that tower, which I talked to you about before, that's in the middle of a flight deck. I was on the very, oh gosh, that thing's tall super tall and the very very top so um we were out to see um this is probably maybe a weekend and i went to the very uh top of it and it was oh gosh it was so windy so so windy but i wanted to go and check make sure everything was in order regarding locks and all the other stuff that go with checking your checklist i guess for fire hydrants and safety purposes so when I went out, the boat was at a standstill and it was, was really crazy because you can't see, um, when you're that far out to sea, there's no land, right? So you're, if you look around, there's nothing but water, but that wind was howling. But the weird thing was the water was completely still and I noticed that because every once in a while you can see um, maybe fishing trawlers out on the horizon and their lights would reflect off of the water so you can see where they are and nothing actually, there's no waves, there was no nothing. And I'm like, this, nah, maybe it's just because I'm way up on top, you know? So I just thought that was kind of interesting. So I went back down on deck, down to the flight deck and I was, um, 
uh, checking chains, make sure the birds were tied up, which are aircraft. And I went down one of the sides of the, uh, I guess the stairs going down to the below deck. And like I said, it was extremely windy, but we weren't moving and the water was so still. And, uh, I, I just didn't understand that because usually when it's really windy, there's choppy water, but it was like glass. And so I go inside the ship and I tell one of my buddies, I'm like, Hey, you notice this out there? So we go back outside. I say, you just need to check this out. And lo and behold, there's like, oh, there's some waves here and there. And it's like, okay, he's, he's, he thinks I'm crazy. But anyways, um, that was a really, really interesting thing that happened. And we were right out, I would say about 60 miles outside of San Diego and just things like that. And I mean, I've seen some, some other interesting things like lights in the water, which I don't know. They're not bioluminescence because I've seen many of those on the ship. Uh, that's when the water stirs up and these microorganisms like light up. But I straight up seen like it looked like a car driving underwater. But it was just the lights, like these yellow lights. And then they just go away. And you see so many different things out there. I think there's a lot of things that are in the ocean we just don't know about, let alone the military knows about. We don't. So... <laughs> Yeah, that was my other weird experiences on that ship. So, yeah, that's what I saw.